Hi all. Today let's take a look at the typed reactive forms which were introduced in Angular 14. So what is meant by a typed reactive form? So here I have created an Angular 14 application and inside the form component I am creating a new form control with an initial value of an empty string. So now when we hover on top of the set value function you can see that the type of our form control which was initialized with a string value it has automatically been detected. So prior to Angular 14 the set value method and the properties value and value changes these by default had the type any but in Angular 14 since the type is automatically deduced in case we try to set an invalid value like a number to the name field the TypeScript raises the error that the value which we assign does not match the type of our form control. So when you migrate from the previous versions of Angular to Angular 14 this kind of code will by default throw an error. So mm -hmm. during the migration process Angular automatically converts the existing form controls into a particular type called untyped form control which is available within the angular forms. So there is a untyped format corresponding to each of the types that is form control, form group, the form builder as well as the form array. So here we will import the form control and once we do that you can see that the error which was being previously thrown by the TypeScript it has gone away and it will be working similar to what it was previously doing in the Angular 13 and the previous versions. So here if you look at the type of the form control you can see that the type is any. So now let's revert our changes. We are planning to make use of the new form control which is typed. So now when we check the type of the set value you can see that the form control is being shown of type string or null. So even though we didn't give anything related to the null, the null is also added as a type by default. So in case you want to create a form control which is non-nullable, then what we need to do is in this form control we can pass a second parameter and here you can set the value non-nullable as true. So now when we go to the set value, you can see that the form control type has changed to string alone. And in case we try to set the value as null, it will be throwing an error. In case we didn't give this option, you can see that it accepts the value of null. So now let's see what are the changes that were introduced to the form group type. So here you can see that I have created a form group and it has a predefined structure with name, age, email, address and all. Now when I try to set the value for this form group, you can see that the type of the form group is automatically deduced by the TypeScript. And in case accidentally I omitted one of the fields, you can see that the TypeScript throws the error. Similarly, in case we try to access the value property of the form group, it automatically adds suggestions for the different children which are available within the value. So previously this kind of recommendation was not available and it usually resulted in many errors. So for confirming that we can just change the type to untyped form group which was the former type of form group which is available in Angular 13 and previous versions. So now in case we remove any keys no errors are being thrown and similarly you can see that there is no recommendation for the value property. So we can basically type anything and TypeScript will not catch the error and it will fail during the runtime. 
So within the form group which we have within the form component, you can see that all these fields are nullable. So another property of the nullable fields is that here we have the running application. So I am going to set some initial values and here I have a reset button which does this function that is it resets the form. So when I click the reset you can see that all the values for the fields all the controls they have been reset to null. So in case I want to reset it back to the initial value which I have given here. So for example here I am going to make the name as non-nullable true. Then when I click on reset you can see that the name field alone does not revert back to null but it reverts back to its initial value. So the examples which we saw till now we had provided an actual initial value to, to the form control and the type was actually deduced by the TypeScript itself. So we also have the option to provide an explicit type that is for the form control as well as all other form types that is a form group or form array. So this kind of explicit declaration is useful in case we have a scenario like this. So here I have the name where I have given the initial value as null. So now what happens is when I try to set the value to a string value, it throws an error. This is because since we had set the initial value as null, it shows that the form control is of type null. So it does not allow to set any other value other than null. So this was actually a mistake and we wanted to make this field accept the string value. It can be nullable but it is basically a string. So in this scenario what we can do is we can provide the type explicitly. So in this scenario we gave that it is either string or null. So now the error goes away and it accepts both the string value as well as the null value. Similar to the form control we can provide explicit types to the form group as well. So here I am creating an interface called personal form and assigning it as the type for the form group. So here I have defined the different fields which are basically form controls with a particular type. So in this way also we will be able to provide specific types to our form group. Another interesting thing to note is that even though for the form group we have given the type as personal form, when we go to the value property of the personal form, you can see that actually it is of type partial and the personal form type. So why this is having the value partial? It is because some of the controls can be disabled within our application. So in this form I have added a code in the set value method that is when I press this set value button I will be effectively disabling the email field. So those kind of fields which have been disabled they will not be available within the value property of the personal form. So in order to access the disabled properties as well we need to call something called the get row value method. So once you call that you will be getting the actual interface which we gave in the declaration. So here for demonstrating that I have added two messages. One is displaying the personal form dot value and other is the get row value method which I am displaying here. So now when we run our application initially you can see that the value as well as the row value it is similar. Now when I press on the set value button you can see that in the form value the email is not available but in the row value it is available and you can see that the email field has been disabled. So this is the difference between the value property and the get row value method. Another interesting thing to note is that there can be scenarios in which we might need to dynamically remove a control from within our form. So 
we can make use of the remove control method and pass the control name. But when we try to do this, you can see that the TypeScript throws an error and it says that this particular field is a mandatory one. So how can we remove this control? So for doing that, while we define the interface for this form, you can mark the particular control which needs to be removed as optional. So now once we have done that, you can see that the TypeScript error goes away. For handling dynamic forms, we have the option called form array within the Angular forms. So this also, the typings have been added for this particular form array as well. So it is quite similar to what we saw earlier for the form control and form group. So you can either provide an explicit type like this, that is, it basically tells that you can add dynamic form controls which are of type string or null. So any other type form control, it will not be allowed. So this I have provided here because initially I am not creating a default form control. So since the array is empty, I have to provide the explicit type. So in case it is not there and here I have something like new form control an empty string, the TypeScript will automatically deduce the type. So you can see that the form control string or null is automatically deduced. So here, since I have given it as empty, I need to provide the explicit type. So once I have done that, now I can add only form controls of type string or null. But in case I try to add a number or any other boolean or something, the TypeScript will be throwing error. So similar to the form array, we have something called a form record as well. So this is also new in Angular 14. So it basically is similar to the form array, but instead of an array, it will be a form group. That's basically it is a type of object. So within this, you can define any form control which will be accepting the type string or null. So this is an addition in Angular 14. So finally, that utility class that is the form builder, it also has been given types. So as you remember, the form builder is a easy replacement for creating the forms. So here, instead of explicitly creating the form group, form control, form array and everything. We can directly make use of the form builder and within that we have the different methods. So here I am using the dot group method in order to create the form group. So this is the convenient way and here when you check you can see that the type is automatically deduced by the form builder group method and you can see all the different types of the controls. So when we run the application, you can see that the application is working as expected. And when we reset the form, you can see that all the fields are getting reverted back to the null value. So in case you need to define a particular field or control as not nullable, for example, in this case, I have the address. So this is a form group. So in case I need to make this as not nullable, we have a property called non-nullable. And within that, we have the group. So whatever we pass within the non-nullable dot group, all these fields will become non-nullable. So let's try this out. When we try to reset, you can see that the address and all the related fields, they are not nullable. Similarly, if we need to make a particular control alone as non nullable, you can use the form builder dot non nullable. And within that, we have the control. So in this scenario, I am making the age as non nullable. 
so I am giving the initial value as 0 now when we set the value and reset the field you can see that the age does not become null and it is reset to the initial value that is 0 so similarly in case we need to make all the fields within our form as non-nullable so there is a convenient class which is available in angular 14 so what we can do is we can revert this back to the previous form so now you can see that all of them are nullable so instead of injecting the form builder we have something called the non-nullable form builder which is introduced in angular 14 so once we inject th this form builder and make use of that all the controls within our form they became non-nullable except for the age which is still having the null value this is because we are explicitly calling the new form control instead of making use of the form builder utility so here i am changing it back to the form builder and now let's see what happens now you can see that the age is also not nullable so these are some of the interesting changes that were introduced in angular 14 to introduce type safety within the reactive forms so one thing to note is that this type safety is available only in reactive forms and it is not available in the template driven forms so hope you are able to get a good idea about the typed reactive forms see you soon thank you